Hello and welcome, Dr. Andy Rosenfarb here. Today I want to talk about a conversation about peptide therapy. Yes, peptide therapy. Now, maybe you've heard of peptide therapy and maybe you haven't. Maybe this is a total new conversation for you. Peptide therapy has emerged as a potential avenue for addressing both acute and degenerative vision loss conditions, particularly conditions like age-related macular degeneration, retinitis pigmentosa, glaucoma, and eye strokes, retinal occlusions, either things like naion, optic nerve strokes, or BRVO, CRVO, uh, branch occlusions or central occlusions of the retina. So peptide therapy is not super new. It's actually been used for thousands of years uh, by traditional medicine like Chinese medicine, uh, Ayurvedic medicine, a lot of different systems of, of traditional medicines. So there are a lot of benefits that peptide therapy can have and peptide therapies in short are amino acid chains. Right, so they're amino acids, and we know that amino acids are the building blocks of our cells, right? There's, it builds up protein so that we improve structure. So think of it as the hardware to build your house. So if there's damage or degeneration, what that means is either there's an incident, like an eye stroke, a retinal stroke, optic nerve stroke, or some eye trauma, where the body needs to rebuild, right? The body needs to rebuild after the damage, get rid of the, the broken the cells in the tissues that's broken down and replace it with healthy new cells. Now in order to do that, we need functionality, right? And the mitochondria fuels that process uh, through called protein synthesis. But the raw material for the protein synthesis needs to come from somewhere. And specifically when we're talking about regeneration of eye tissue, uh, including the optic nerve, we it's helpful rather, to have the correct raw material, in this case, the correct sequence of amino acids, which we call peptides, that are useful and specific to the eye, the structure of the eye. So the first thing I want to talk about is how does peptide therapy benefit? Then we're going to talk a little bit about some examples of peptide therapy, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the research before that as well, what led up to it, So, uh, which I'll do right now. So peptide therapy was originally researched, uh, research, again, it's been used for thousands of years in things like Chinese medicine, but the first research I came upon was actually done in the 1970s in Russia. They did a lot of research studies, and you guys can do your own research on this and, and look it up, but they did a ton of research uh, using pepti peptide therapies for regeneration. All right, in Chinese medicine, we know that we use this for very, very strong and severe, severe deficiency cases where there is an absolute structural breakdown of certain tissues or organs in the body. So in this case, we're talking about the eyes. So in Russia, what they did is they identified specific cells, specific organs, and created these amino acid peptide supplements specific for different organs, right? So if the brain was breaking down, we're gonna use amino acid peptide specific for brain. If the heart breaks down, we're gonna use peptides for the heart. If the liver breaks down, we're gonna use peptides for the liver. If the vascular system breaks down, we're gonna use uh, peptides for the vascular system. Uh, if the eyes break down, we're gonna use peptides that help support in the rebuilding of uh, ocular tissue, including the retina, the, the, the cones, the vascular system, the choroid, and the optic nerve. So we're looking mostly at neurovascular repair. Okay, and we know that, we already know that, nerves also need fat, which is why we recommend things like uh, fish oils and different omega-3 DHAs because uh, nerve cells will function uh, on glucose, but they need to repair and regenerate from fat and protein, specifically, again, these peptides. So the conversation here is, in Russia, they were using these amino acid peptides, which are originally derived from uh, bovine and porcine. That's pig and, and uh, cow, okay? Bovine is cow, porcine is pig. So what they were doing is taking desiccated glandulars, right? Again, for thyroid, they desiccate the thyroid glandulars. For heart, they desiccate, desiccate uh, heart tissue. So you're basically taking that idea where 
uh, the organ heals the organ. So, for example, you want to heal the, liver, heal the liver, you eat the liver. If you want to heal your heart, you eat heart. If you want to heal your brain, you eat brain. So this is a very old school mentality for healing. But we got more specific, the Russians rather got more specific in terms of identifying these specific peptide uh, and how they were used. So the research in, in Russia also suggested that uh, juvenile peptides were better. So basically, long and short, they're slaughtering uh, youthful animals, mostly pigs and cows for these purposes. I kind of have an ex ethical issue with that. So I'm hoping it's someday um, that they're going to use uh, products that are more synthetic, that they've been able to uh, replicate the amino acid and peptide sequence uh, and to see if that's uh, just as useful as the uh, glandulars, right? The raw glandulars, which is what we call them. So regarding to vision, what we'll use is desiccated eye from porcine. Most of the time it's bovine. Um, and I'm not sure and I'm not convinced if uh, youthful bovine or porcine is more effective than adult and or deceased. Because some of the companies that we're using were from, uh, again, they were like butchering cows, butchering pigs. Again, some of you may have positions on that. But again, they'd, they'd use that uh, for meat production and then they would take the glandulars. They'd use the heart, they'd use the brain, they'd use the intestines, whatever for these nutritional supplements. And that's basically what we're, we're talking about here. So again, for brain issues, we're using raw brain glandular. If there's eye issues, we're using raw eye glandular, which is in, to some extent, that's in our uh, visual acuity formula. Okay, so those of you guys taking the visual acuity formula, uh, you're going to get that, the total, total vision formula. I'm sorry. Sorry, uh, the total vision formula, not the visual acuity formula. The to my, our main formula, which is a total vision formula, has um, raw eye glandular in it. But if you can't take that or you won't take that, there are other options. You can take it by itself. Uh, there are different companies that offer um, uh, eye, extra, eye glandulars. Uh, one of the companies that we use is called Standard Process. Uh, I like them a lot. They're very, very inexpensive. And again, one of the problems with the Russian pro products that I found is they're incredibly expensive. So I was trying to find a cheaper way to get this product to my patients um, and those who need this. So uh, I had been using standard process for a very long time and the term they use uh, for this uh, glandular product is called protomorphogens. That's their, their term they use, or, or PMG. So Standard Process has essentially two products that are specific to eyes. One is called Iplex, and the other one is called Oculotrophin PMG. So that's pretty much what we use uh, in our clinic. Um, you're also free to look at other raw glandulars that other companies will use, and you'll probably get similar effects. Um, you can try the, uh, the Russian uh, companies that sell them, but they are expensive. Uh, of course, they claim that they're higher quality, and again, they're these juvenile that they believe is better quality and is going to get better results. I don't know about that yet, so I haven't. I understand the, the science and the theory behind that, but I'm not convinced that that's the case. So, now that you guys know what it is that we're using, let's talk for a minute. I want to give you guys six main areas that uh, that using peptide therapy can help. All right, so let's talk about those right now before we wrap up. The first is it, peptide therapy really helps with cellular repair and regeneration, which of course is what we're after when we're talking about uh, vision recovery. So certain peptides can promote cellular repair and regeneration of the retina, of the macula, of the optic nerve, and of the choroid and all the tissue of the eye. Uh, also brain, right? So a lot of times, remember that we're dealing with, with, there can be some brain involvement. So in those cases, I will often recommend brain tissue, uh, especially if you things like, see things like cognitive decline or TBIs, brain injuries, so on and so forth. So it will help potentially restore these damaged cells, again, by giving the, the hard uh, amino acid peptides as building blocks specifically to help rebuild your retina and optic nerve and macula. It also, interestingly, has anti-inflammatory effects. So some peptides do have anti-inflammatory properties like these, which may reduce inflammation in the eye and protect retinal cells from further damage. Very important. 
The third is there's also neuroprotection. So peptides like brain-derived neurotrophic factors and eye neurotrophic factors, which are pretty much, again, the PMGs or simply stated these glandulars, can support the survival of neurons, helping them protect the retina cells that, again, are crucial for vision. So again, it's protecting these rods and, set, rods and cone cells, the macula and the, uh, the cone cells in the macula and the retinal cells in the periphery. Also in that, it will help improve blood flow. By A, we can take glandulars that help support the vascular system, and these peptides can enhance blood circulation in the eyes, ensuring the retinal tissue receive adequate oxygen and nutrition. Remember, almost all these eye conditions we talk about being suffocation and starvation because they're not getting adequate blood flow and food supply. The fifth factor is that it modulates growth factors. This is really important where certain peptides can stimulate production of growth factors that are important to maintaining healthy retinal and optic nerve function. Again, very, very important. Finally, the sixth is it reduces oxidative stress. Peptides can help combat oxidative stress and free radical uh, damage, which is very important. So it's a key factor in degenerative disease and by managing oxidative stress, uh, which raw glandulars can do, this will help release the burden. We've talked a lot about um, the, the role of oxidative stress. So one final use that I want to talk about that's not classic in terms of the use for peptide therapy is something that I've found specifically relevant to those of you guys who are dealing with optic nerve or retinal autoimmune conditions. Now here's a theory on that. Very interesting. Listen up here. So what happens is with these conditions, the immune system is attacking the retina and attacking the optic nerve, right? And we know I've talked about using vitamin D3 is arguably one of the single most important nutrients for managing all autoimmune conditions. Uh, inside that, we need to make sure that uh, the vitamin D levels are good because it's going to dampen the immune response. Very important. On top of that, we'll add these um, these peptides specific for the retina and the optic nerve so that the body will be preoccupied with uh, attacking these uh, substances. So basically we're putting raw eye glandular into the body so that the immune system can chew on that and leave your healthy cells alone. Now there's not a ton of research on that, but it's something that I've found over the last 30 years to be very effective and be very useful as a supplemental treatment strategy for autoimmune conditions. Of course, we need to deal with the other factors driving autoimmune. We need to look at things like gut health, inflammation, uh, heavy metals, um, infections, so on and so forth, anything that could drive autoimmune factors. But again, that is a summary of what I want to talk about today on peptide therapy. If you have more questions, please feel free to reach out. The cool thing again about peptide therapy is it's an easy strategy for nutrition. The only patients that we see who do have some issues with peptide therapy are of course vegetarians, vegans, and certain folks who have religious um, uh, religious issues with taking supplements that are not either kosher or um, again vegan or just there's problems with that so again uh, peptide therapy right now is animal based um, I'm hoping in the future that they'll come up with a, uh, a non more of a synthetic where they're just kind of replicating the amino acid, amino acid peptide chains um, I don't know if that's going to be as effective as peptide therapy but it could be so I hope you found that useful and relevant to your condition. Again, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to myself or my team. And if you wanna learn more about our programs and how we can help you recover and preserve your vision, feel free to reach out to our office, call, email, DM, however works best for you. Again, I'm Dr. Andy Rosenfarb with AccuVision, where your vision is our mission. See you next time.